I think the, the question of what's in this for Indigenous people, how can they benefit? And um, there, there are some experiments going on uh, in Madagascar and Bolivia and some other countries where at the project level uh, we're finding there's a, a benefit sharing schemes where local communities receive 50% of the benefits, 10% to other players and, and uh, some to the government. But there are, there are various schemes that are going on at the local level, um, not a national approach, but it seems that, that for a national approach we may be able to learn from projects that are going on right now in parts of the world. And um, here at the Convention on Climate Change, there have been a number of events where I've been hearing from project level activities that seem to be offering benefits. Sometimes it's in terms of payments, other times it's in terms of educational benefits or health benefits. And um, so the, well, I think there's a lot to learn from the experiments that are, that are going on right now. Um, the, in, in terms of indigenous people benefits, I think uh, the other thing to remember is that deforestation currently is, is, is causing a lot of damage and a lot of suffering all over the world. So, so although there are risks uh, associated with red, there are also risks associated with uncontrolled and no action on, on uh, deforestation. So we have to balance those out. And I think what I'm hearing is from the local people, indigenous people, is that yes, there are risks, but they're also seeing there may be some benefit. It might even be benefits in terms of, of, of helping ensure them, giving ensure their land rights and their land tenure, that if, if, if done correctly, that it seems possible that, that indigenous peoples may actually have some benefits, not just in terms of some resources, but in terms of securing their, their rights to the land. But again, this remains to be seen. I'm perhaps more optimistic than, than, than others, but, but I do see some potential here.